Hey folks, my name is Shane Whedon and I'm with IBM, uh, but representing today uh, participation in the FIDO Alliance. And I've got this opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you and introduce you to what a pass key is. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the demonstration of pass keys from Christian and Tim. And I thought I'd just go into a little bit more detail about uh, what, what we're trying to achieve here. So uh, back in May, uh, there was an announcement from Google, Apple, and Microsoft uh, that was published on the FIDO Alliance that uh, talked about a unified desire to reduce the world's reliance on passwords and an effort to introduce this concept of pass keys uh, to do that. Then uh, in June at the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference, which was on the same week as uh, the RSA Security Conference, Apple announced pass keys in their upcoming iOS 16 and macOS Ventura releases. There's quite a bit of information about them, uh, you know, presented by Apple during that week. And also in uh, earlier, early in between those two events, Google I.O. had another, their developer conference, and they also announced their intention to release this technology what, which, that we're going to talk about today uh, in the latter part of 2022. So let's sort of dive into what a passkey is. Well, first of all, I want people to understand that a passkey is actually just like any other FIDO credential, and it's a key pair based on public key cryptography that ensures that there are no uh, shared secrets that are human generated that suffer the same characteristics of, of passwords like uh, fishability and reuse. And um, uh, one of the other sort of things that I guess is a little bit unique about pass keys and, and one of the announcements made by Google, Apple and Microsoft is that they, these, these key pairs will be able to be backed up and replicated across devices. And I've got a little asterisk there because where they're going to be able to be backed up to and replicated across isn't necessarily set in stone yet. So, for example, with the Apple ecosystem, they can be backed up across, say, an uh, iOS device and a, and a Mac uh, that are logged in with the same Apple account in the iCloud keychain. And uh, the intent from Google is to ensure that they're backed up with your Google account when you create one on the Android platform. But whether they'll be able to be shared beyond that and uh, um, in, in the same key across the ecosystem, that's not been announced and that's not so clear just yet. But I think uh, we need some time to evolve the technology and, and see what, what's going to happen over time with, with that particular idea. So initially backed up in the ecosystem of the, the uh, fabric provider that's, that's offering the, uh, the operating system. And um, the main reason that these pass keys, uh, this technology of backed up or synced credentials is being introduced is to help solve one of the big problems with uh, broad scale adoption, and that is the account recovery problem. So what happens if I lose access to my device? Uh, how do I get my you know, access to my accounts back? If they're backed up as part of your cloud fabric and you're able to obtain a new device and log into it with the cloud account and you have access to those pass keys, then they follow you around a bit in the same way as passwords stored in a password manager from those providers works today, uh, same as you know bookmarks for your browser. So one of the key characteristics of these photo credentials is their ability to be recovered. And uh, that will definitely help with more broad scale adoption of the tech. And there's a couple of other things that are going to happen with respect to how the technology is used. You may have seen this in Christian's demo and it's, that's going to help also scale them in the consumer space. So for the purposes of this particular deck, we're going to use this iconography that you see on the right to represent pass keys. So let's look at them on a security spectrum where at the sort of bad end of the spectrum we have uh, passwords today and at the very far right hand end of the spectrum and still the gold standard for for FIDO credentials, we might have hardware security keys where the, the key pair is strictly device bound. Right? Uh, somewhere along the way here to combat the 
the uh, threat of credential stuffing. We introduced conditional multi-factor authentication to passwords to try to combat that threat. And we see pass keys as better than that because they have the characteristic of being phishing resistant, uh, just in the way that they are bound to a web origin. And therefore, the, the uh, idea of a, an attacker's site being not recognized by human is taken away. The browser will deal with that, that particular check for you. Uh, so we see them as lot, quite a lot better than, than um, password plus traditionally fishable multi-factor. Uh, and therefore, this diagram is not to scale. You know, you could consider there would be a bit of a chasm here in the middle. Now, um, I did mention that besides their sync ability or the ability to be backed up and restored, there are other features in the delivery of this technology that are going to help with its adoption on the, uh, you know, particularly in the consumer space. And what I've done here is taken three little screen grabs. The top left one was from one of the demonstrations from Apple. Uh, the top right one is a concept rendering from Microsoft. And the bottom one here is from a little demo site that Google put together. What all of these renderings are about is the, the, the idea that a pass key is very similar in use to a password that you see from the vendor's password managers. So the thinking here is you'll be able to use annotations on a username input field and do autocomplete with a pass key for login in the same way as you can do autocomplete for username and password today. Uh, it has this good characteristic though of still being uh, phishing resistant. It's a uh, experience that uh, many of us uh, are familiar with today because we use password managers to store credentials for accounts. It's considered privacy preserving because all of this discovery of whether you have a pass key for a site or not is done client side. The, the relying party website doesn't uh, find out whether you have a pass key or not until after you choose to use it. And the, the web authen specification, which is where the JavaScript APIs for using uh, photo credentials in, in the browser uh, are developed, are including simple instrumentation APIs to allow this type of experience to be delivered. So that was the second thing that's new about passkeys. Remember, the first was their ability to be backed up and restored. The second thing that I showed there was a intent to deliver a very intuitive integrated login experience this is the third thing and it's about it it's about delivering this technology cross ecosystem and what we mean by that and you may have seen it in christian's demo is that you can use a credential in one provider's fabric like a for example on an iphone or an android phone and use it to log in to a browser from a different fabric. So in Christian's demo, he showed using his Android phone to log into Edge on a Windows computer. And this allows, sorry, I'm just going to go back here. Uh, and this allows the, the end user to take their credentials and, and just log in across different types of devices. And then uh, the intent is to use that login to say bootstrap sign into a new device and then allow the user to create a credential in the new ecosystem natively. So in the case of <clears throat> the demonstration from Christian, we saw him use his Android device to log into a Windows computer and uh, in, in Edge, and then he was invited to create a Windows Hello credential. Uh, on that on that new ecosystem and you'd have both of those credentials registered but either can be used for access to the account and when it goes back to the the microsoft environment the credential will just be available won't have to use the phone again so by way of example and to show this working in a cross ecosystem way i've pre-recorded this little video and i've actually used my github account 
where there is existing second factor functionality for security keys. So GitHub haven't had to change anything. This is a standard GitHub account uh, and the standard GitHub website. I've turned on two factor and I've pre-done the registration experience where I've registered quote unquote security key. And uh, the instead of re registering a traditional say hardware security key, like a USB key style key, I used my iPhone, which has pass key support on it. This is a, a, a developer beta version of it and registered my mobile phone as a security key. And so this experience is just showing how this, this cross ecosystem uh, authentication can work, not just for new websites that might have pass key support built into them as a alternative or replacement for password technology, but also retrofit into existing website deployments with no code changes on those sites. So let's just run through this video. And what you'll see is I perform a username password login to my GitHub account. I'm prompted for second factor, but instead of using a security key, I click on add a phone, scan the QR code with my iPhone. I'm offered to use my pass key uh, to complete that authentication. My second factor login completes and I'm logged into my GitHub account. And, and that's true for many other existing consumer sites that have been instrumented to support security keys for second factor. So there's a lot of questions in the market about, uh, in the moment, about how these pass keys might be applicable to high value consumer at regulated industries and enterprise environments. Let's just explore that a little bit. There's gonna be a series of uh, classes of, of uh, relying party site that aren't going to be comfortable only accepting a, a pass key for authentication because uh, to be uh, fair, the ability to access my uh, Google account will allow me to recover all my Google ecosystem pass keys. And there will be industries where account sovereignty requirements are such that the there needs to be a factor where the that is owned by the the relying party themselves the the life cycle of the the authentication is owned by them and and that that will include uh enterprise deployment so this is not forgotten by the FIDO alliance and web within working groups in w3c uh it's definitely the case these vendors are going after the consumer case first i mean the the technology is completely geared towards that but I do want to share with you some uh, some of the thinking about that's going into how we could also make pass keys applicable to uh, these other industries. So it's the the current thinking is to use a, an extension in WebAuthn, which we're calling DPK or the Device Public Key Extension. And I'll just explain how it works. In this case, the little red iconography is a pass key, and that's synced across multiple devices. Think of it like phone, laptop, tablet from left to right here. And it's the same pass key in each case that's been registered with the site. Now we've got this other little uh, chip-like iconography with the key in it here, a green one, red one, and a purple one. And they're different and they're different colors on purpose. The thinking is that when you use a pass key from a specific device, there will also be sent with it a proof that, that there is a second key that's bound to that specific device. So when the pass key is used from the phone on the left, it will always provide this additional information that says I'm being used from this device, this phone. And that will be different from when that pass key is being used from the laptop and the tablet. And what that would allow a relying party to do is say is to answer the question something like, is this the first time I have seen this passkey from this device? And if the answer to that is yes, then the relying party might choose to use other risk factors or authentication challenges uh, to ensure that they 
completely comfortable that the user is who they say they are and that they 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 manage the account sovereignty uh, examples there in much the same way as adaptive access and risk engines do today for many of the sites that we log into this idea that uh, a device bound signal will be sent is being uh, proposed and the ink is not dry on these standards yet but it's being proposed in the uh, web authn specifications today that and that that will basically allow a a type of you know conditional uh multi-factor to occur the first time a pass key is used on a specific device and uh that can be optimized out you know in future uses of the pass key from that device and uh this this is the this is the current thinking about how to make pass keys uh applicable in the enterprise and regulated industry environment now it's always the case that those environments may choose to use deploy hardware security keys and use them but the intent here is to try to also make pass keys a viable option uh, to allow the scaling of this technology uh, because you know pretty much everyone carries a mobile phone that will be capable of being able to be used as an authenticator so just in wrap uh, here, pass keys are being designed as a drop-in replacement for passwords. The enhanced security characteristics that are being referred to here are, first of all, because they're based on public-private key cryptography and not generated by a human, they won't have the ability to be uh, um, attacked via things like credential stuffing attacks and additionally because they're bound to web origin they will be considered phishing resistant just like any other FIDO credential we saw also that by way of the pattern of mobile phone as an authenticator and the standards that are in place for allowing you to use your phone uh, with a different cloud provider's ecosystem so in the case where for example I showed github second factor login I was using my iPhone against my Chrome browser that was not a complete Apple ecosystem there that was cross ecosystem and if you've seen Christian's demonstration he he showed the same between his Android phone and Microsoft platform and also his Android phone and the Apple environment the ability to have those pass keys synced with your cloud provider also addresses the account recovery problem that has uh, prevented I guess the broad scale adoption of of FIDO with traditional hardware security keys in the consumer space the user experience that is being proposed for the use of pass keys by way of an extension to traditional password manager uh, experiences in the browser today will be uh, offered via annotating the HTML input fields to allow the client to offer login with a pass key if the relying party supports it and that instrumentation is being worked on as part of an extension to the JavaScript API in WebAuthn today and finally I shared some thoughts around how, what the working groups are doing with respect to considering how pass keys might be used in regulated industries, enterprise, government, so on, where the account sovereignty requirements may go beyond uh, just being able to access the cloud provider's account for access to a relying party account. And with that, I thank you for your time. Remember that FIDO is all about delivering strong authentication with an outstanding user experience and I hope you have the opportunity to try out pass keys and help us move the world away from passwords.